the film A Separation is so brilliantly written that by the time you reach the end you can't pinpoint one particular feature that made it so engrossing. The story is fairly simple but it's the treatment that makes it so tight. Here's the premise. Simon wants to move abroad to a promising future for her daughter Therme while Nader is bound to be by his senile father. Simon shifts to her mother's place since the daughter decides to stay with her dad and employs Razia to be the old man's caretaker. Nader is left furious one day when he returns home early to learn that Razia tied up his Alzheimer's stricken old man to stop him from casually walking down the road and locked him up alone in the house to go out. He also notices some cash missing from his drawer. When she returns he impulsively in a fit of rage pushes her out of the house causing Razia to have a miscarriage. Both Razia and Hojat her husband appeal to the court asking for blood money for the lost life. However Nader asserts that he hasn't committed any crime. The film essentially then is a quest for truth. Is Nader guilty? There are many subtext underneath what the title points to. Of course there's a couple who's lost their chemistry and are no longer at the same page. In fact Nader's bond with his father is more pronounced than that with his wife. However, the film also sheds light on the themes of class division and morality. Let's have a closer look at these two. There are many instances in the film where you feel that other characters regard Razia and Hojat to be dangerous. The teacher is seen questioning their daughter Sumaye if their parents regularly fight, assuming that Hojat could be responsible for the miscarriage. Hojat confronts the teacher when he learns this. After this act, Simon is wary of Hojat's volatility and is scared that he may harm her daughter. Hojat, of course, has his reasons for behaving like that. He believes he should not stay silent and let others trample his rights, as was the case when he was fired from his previous job without an explanation, leaving him unemployed and depressed. When the judge states that they'd have to get a government employee or a business owner to vouch for them, Hojat is visibly distressed. pleading These scenes make it pretty clear that the film presents a subtle critique on class division. There are no villains or out and out negative characters in this film. Every character has valid reasons for his or her conduct. Nader lies that he does not know about Razia's pregnancy, but he does so in order to be there for his father and daughter. There is a wonderful scene wherein the judge asks him to go call Therme for questioning. If she indeed told him about the incident or did he overhear it? Nader could have easily prepared her about the question, but he goes up to her and just tells her to go in. Moreover, he does confess to his daughter in an earlier scene that he indeed knew about Razia's pregnancy and later adds, if she wants, he shall go and tell them the truth. He does these things to not let his daughter lose faith in him. He wishes to be someone she still looks up to. Next, Razia knows it's not Nader's push, but the car accident a day earlier which led to her miscarriage. But she goes on with the trial to demand blood money as that will ease their financial situation and will keep Hojat's pestering creditors away for some time. Towards the end she could have easily lied to Nader but she decides not to swear on the Quran and turns down the money which she dearly needed. Hojat is viewed as volatile as discussed earlier though he has reasons for this temper. However towards the end in that tense 2 minute single take when Razia reveals to him that Nader is not guilty we anticipate that he shall explode at her. However Hojat to our surprise punishes himself rather than saying anything bitter to his wife. Ironical then that Razia and Hojat as a couple are more understanding than Simon and Nader. It is fascinating to see that amidst all of the chaos around them, the two girls, Therme and Somaye, don't lose their tenderness for each other. One of the film's highlights is the quick glance that the two share, as if to say it's futile to make sense of it all. At the end of the day, it's the kids who suffer the most. Hence, it's not the characters but the situations that turn out to be wicked. To quote for Hadi himself, it's the details of day-to-day -day life that create chaos. Apart from these interesting multi-dimensional characters, it's for Hadi's deaf direction that takes the film a notch further. Scenes which turn out to be extremely vital to the story 
are treated just like others. The scenes in focus are first, Simon taking the money from the drawer to pay for her stuff to be moved. Later, of course, we find out that not seeing the money in the drawer contributes in amplifying Nadia's anger. And second, Razia receiving doctor's contact from the teacher, wherein interestingly, the camera never cuts to Nadir and hence it seems to be an ordinary affair. These scenes are not stylized, imbued in realism and hence do not grab our attention. Another interesting directorial choice is to not show certain actions. By doing so, Farhadi asks the audience to actively watch the film and in some cases, imagine or interpret those scenes for themselves. How does Hojat convince the teacher to tell the truth? How and when did Razia get hit by the car? How did she fall onto the stairs? Who broke the window pane of the car in the climax, Razia or Hojat? At the end, whom does Terme choose to stay with, her mom or dad? She could well opt to stay with her father, like she did the first time around, forcing her mother to stay in the country and near her, if not under the same roof. Or she could go with her mother, as she is clearly more understanding and sensitive towards her. Does Farhadi tell us? No. We, the audience, get to decide.